Welcome to the first ever episode of Drunk Comics. I'm Kelly, and this is Curly, aka Phoenix Sisters, and today we are talking about Birds of Prey. Now, let's get this in for a close-up. <laughs> Alright, this is Birds of Prey before Gail Simone got to it. Um, the first writer was Chuck Dixon and Gary Frank did the art on the very first episode or first issue. We can edit that. <laughs> or we can just blame it on being drunk. That's the benefit of doing drunk comics. That is true. All right. So to start off, I'm going to talk about the characters where they were before. <laughs> oh, <God. No. laughs> Why are we laughing? Nothing happened. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right. So before Birds of Prey happened, The Killing Joke happened, which is pretty famous. But if you don't know about The Killing Joke, it was supposed to be outside of Canon's story where the Joker shot Barbara Gordon. And the DC editors decided to keep that in Canon. And I think their exact words were paralyze the bitch. I think, I think that's the controversy I remember, yeah. Yeah. So... So she kind of got shelved after that, and then John Ostrander, during Suicide Squad, brought Barbara Gordon out of retirement as a superhero and made um, started turning her into Oracle. So as Oracle, she's the all-seeing, all-knowing Oracle, all-powerful. She can hack into any computer anywhere, and she's got the brain to just plot things and direct heroes like their chess pieces on a chessboard. So she kind of started finding a life as a hero after her life as Batgirl was prematurely ended. And Black Canary, who, as most people know, is my favorite. Um, <laughs> really? Really? I know. I mean, I just have it tattooed on my leg, which I'm going to have to show after a few more drinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do it. <laughs> All right. Put your foot right up here on the table. <laughs> oh, that's happening. <laughs> Spoilers. Okay. So Black Canary started out before this series. She had not been in the series for a while. She was, and this series started her out where she was really down and out. So the last series she had really been in was Green Arrow. And then after that, um, she made some appearances in Justice League and some other team hero series. But at this point, so she and Green Arrow broke up years ago, and he's now dead. So the love of her life is dead. And the way she found out was all her friends in the hero community thought it would be a good idea to let his son that she didn't know about, his grown son, give her the news. So we, we pick up with this story where Black Canary, the love of her life is dead. She's found out he has a son she didn't know about. And she's broke and just really down and out. She's also was previously during the Green Arrow series tortured and lost her sonic scream. So <laughs> Curly's nodding, you know this part. So both these Heroines are, um, you know, started out a little down and out, and through this team, Birds of Prey, they find new life. So Oracle, basically, and she actually kind of tried the Birds of Prey thing before with Power Girl, and it didn't go well. People died, and so she's at this point where she needs another operative. She needs, basically, a human avatar in the world. So she goes shopping for a new girlfriend. I mean... Operative. <laughs> and she's kind of looking for another hero who needs a second second chance at this hero thing. So she recruits Black Canary. Black Canary has no idea who she is. So for the first several issues, Black Canary doesn't know who's behind the the voice on the ear um, the earphone. So she recruits Black Canary, and Black Canary is such a hot mess that she just doesn't even bother changing out of her Black Canary leotard. She just throws on boots and a fringe leather jacket <laughs> and goes to the airport like that <laughs> and flies off to whatever country Oracle is flying her off to. And so then 
Previous to this, Black Canary had always worn a wig as part of her costume. That was how the original Black Canary, um, Dinah's mom did it. That was how this Black Canary did it. So she gets to this far- Does Smallville do it that way too? Smallville reversed it where, where her, her real hair was the blonde hair and then she wore the wig in real life. Yeah. Which I don't get how that works if she ever dated anyone, wouldn't they notice? So Black Canary gets to this far-flung location, which I haven't read the book in a while, and I think that makes us funnier. <laughs> so I don't remember the location. I think it was one of the one of DC's made-up countries. So she gets to this far-flung location and decides, screw this, I don't want a wig anymore. Oracle gave me a new suit, so I'm just going to dye my hair blonde because who needs a secret identity? I mean, really, who needs the hassle of dyeing your hair so so often. I feel like she traded one inconvenience for another. Right? But, you know what, at least your real hair isn't going to come off in the middle of a fight. So. I mean, it depends on how intense the fight is, Kelly. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> so, it's her big moment where she dyes her hair blonde, goes out in this evening dress to track down the bad guy, and... Then eventually, you know, shortly after that, debuts her new suit, which is badass. It, I have quite the soft spot for that suit. I made well, that suit. to find a picture of it. Yes, please do. All right, you keep talking. All right. I'll look. So, this whole thing goes on for... Um, that is the suit. <laughs> Let's find one where it's all the way on. <laughs> That's okay, guys. At the end, I'll show you the one that's not all the way on. Ooh, ooh. You have to watch to the end of the video. <laughs> I'm also thinking we could edit in um, pictures. Oh, yeah. We could do that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, <sighs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> all right, guys. This page. Is it focused? I can't see around the actual book. Sort of. It's okay. We'll find one where she's taking up more of the page. Yes. Okay. All right, so several, several issues before she actually finds out that Oracle and Barbara Gordon are one and the same. So she, she doesn't even know if Oracle's a man or a woman because the voice is disguised. And so they just have this kind of fun, playful banter and all of Babs' scenes, you see her like working out her upper body while and swimming and stuff while she's coordinating Black Canary. <laughs> and then a little later in the series is my favorite what the fuck moment. Um, Black Canary dates Ra's al Ghul. And she doesn't realize he's Ra's al Ghul. I don't know how because he has the crazy eyes. He has the evil sort of Wolverine hair. And Oracle is in her earbud the whole time going, dude, that's Roz fucking all ghoul. And Black Canary's like, no, you're just jealous. You're just, you just got issues. You just don't like me having a bit of happiness. Girl's got a soft spot for older men and, you know, kind of bad boys. <laughs> uh, yeah, Roz's daughter Talia decided to fix them up. I don't know why Talia was taking an interest in her dad's love life at that point, but, you know. Talia is not known for being the most appropriate character. We'll save that for another episode entirely, <laughs> or we'll get off on a different rant. Oh, yes, we will. But so this whole time, Diana's dating Ra's al Ghul, and Oracle's telling her, like, dude, you need to dump the male maniac. She's like, no, he's really not. So by the time she realizes... There's a big fight. She gets very badly injured and ends up in the Lazarus pit. And that's how she gets her canary cry back. So, you know, it kind of worked out that Silver whole... Silver linings. Yeah. Yeah. So she, And, of course, as you all probably know, when you go in the Lazarus pit, you come out batshit insane. So can you imagine getting a sonic scream and being batshit insane? Yeah, she basically comes out screaming and... The whole room kind of has to shut that shit down until she can sober up, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> so, but the series is a lot of fun. It's 
just even before Gail Simone came in and sprinkled her magic, Chuck Dixon had a lot of snappy dialogue. It was a lot of fighting kind of real world adjacent villains. And it was really these characters who were at a real low point in their life finding a way to fly together. And it was so cute. It was almost not corny. Oh, thanks. It was totally corny. It was a pun, and I'm super proud of it. So, you know. And later in the series, when Gail Simone comes on board and Huntress comes on board, Huntress realizes that, or after a few missions with the Birds of Prey, Huntress is like, wow. It almost feels like, or she kind of starts to realize that Oracle has chosen the missions to help her with her personal development, and and is like, oh, yeah, that totally happened with us, too. It was strange how, no matter what was going on in my life, a mission would come along to, like, teach me a lesson and just, you know, help me get a new perspective. And Huntress is like, wait, 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 what the fuck? <laughs> and got kind of pissed, and then Diana all of a sudden realizes, oh, that was on purpose. Because, so I love Barbara Gordon. I love Oracle. But she knows how to manipulate, and she did it. Her heart was in the right place. She was using her powers for good. She was. But, you know, maybe you shouldn't do that with people who are supposed to be your coworkers and friends. Or at least tell them, be like, hey, I, I think this would be good for you to do this mission. That's that would me. involve characters and any form of literature or media, just having open, honest discussions with each other. Yawn. As opposed to, you know... <laughs> finding out later what the, they were really doing and then getting mad about it for that temporary time before you realize their heart was in the right place. <laughs> Asking too much. That is true. I mean, conflict sells, right? So, now I'm going to show off my tattoo, and then that's our episode. <sighs> Let's see if we I'm can just suck. <laughs> nope, oh, nope, no knocking over the alcohol. <laughs> All right. So, you can't really see it. We're it's going to be upside down from that angle. We'll have to put in a picture, guys. Yeah. Yeah. But but we have to leave in you leaning back all like, <laughs> oh, with your sock foot in front of the camera. Absolutely. So, thanks for joining us for Drunk Comics. And tune in next time for, I don't know what's going to happen next time. Someone else will be drunkenly telling you a comic, though. Most likely. It might be me. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> it probably will be her.